Today, uh, we'll talk about the business part of the SAP. Usually in the SAP security related talks, the uh, common focus is the technical part of SAP security. We'll of course have uh, technical content there, but we'll be talking about the business processes. So we'll have an introduction there, and then we'll have an introduction on the SAP systems in general um, for you to better understand your exposure. We'll have uh, a demo, uh, and then we'll talk about the sub credit cards and birds. Um, after that, we'll just focus on the external payment systems in SAP systems, and we'll talk about how we'll be staying secure. So the first slide, I mean, I think everybody uses somehow Twitter, or at least, I mean, used once, right? So here we have some tweets with interesting content, and this is actually about, uh, about this I and mean, how this actually happened. We'll start with the business processes first, so I'll talk basically about the SAP systems. Um, the sub ERP systems are uh, the dominating system in the world about business. So these systems translate business processes to the digital world. So whenever you are shopping, you are doing something online, internet, etc. Uh, I'm sure it is passing through an SAP system somehow, or it is provisioned using an SAP system. Um, subsystems cover almost all aspects of the business. Uh, that's the HR, logistics, financials, many different areas of the business. And these systems have extensive customizations. You are pretty familiar, I'm sure, in your company, some people are coming, doing constant development on SAP systems. Many SAP consultants are coming and going, writing something they call ABAP code. I'm sure you heard about it. Uh, these extensive customizations are the nature of the SAP world. So you buy a software, a big one, and it, if it doesn't meet your expectations, you customize it, and this takes years until uh, you are finished with it, and then there's the next version, and then you start it all over again. So this is pretty much the cycle. Um, since SAP is the core of major businesses, we'll focus on how we can attack to this core. So the subsystems are pretty complex systems, and we know complexity is not a big fan of security. So we're talking about numerous components, different operating systems, databases, many, many different parts of IT security involved. And I'm sure you know how difficult it is to run IT systems, right? I mean, when they work, it's like a wonder. So you never want to touch to a system which is actually running. And the time the security interferes with the SAP systems, it is usually 10 years later. So after the systems are all there, then the security is somehow involved with it. So people do not want to change their systems. And if you find properly patched systems, I mean, this is usually a wonder. SAP systems are also generally uh, way behind the traditional uh, patch process, but this is changing recently. I, I think regarding SAP security, the most important part is if it goes down, I lose my job approach that comes from the operations. So um, this is something to think about. But one aspect is, the SAP security is not about the code or the systems that the SAP system has. There are a lot of add-ons in SAP. So these are like ABAP add-ons, which are installed in the business systems for doing payment card processing, document management, and other functionality. And uh, they become part of the landscape without you easily noticing it. Um, attacking subsystems are fairly easy compared to some other hardened systems, of course. I mean, when we look at the authentication parts, year 2014 and almost, uh, I mean, mo most of the enterprises that we audit have a lot of default passwords in their SAP systems. This is a little bit because of the structure of SAP. In SAP, there is something called clients, which has nothing to do with TCP clients or client-server architecture. It is just 
an organizational different unit in the system. This is just like one identifier in a database table. And these clients have different users and uh, passwords associated with it. So uh, if you have one SAP system and multiple clients, uh, there are multiple uh, different types of users that you need to take care of. And there are always things like client copies, etc., where people just focus on the productive clients and they ignore the rest. But if an attacker has access to these clients, they can, of course, uh, access to the database tables as well, and they can access the business critical data. So these default passwords and weak passwords are the most common ones. And when we talk about SAP landscape, the typical developments, uh, integration, quality assurance, and production systems, uh, roughly 7% of the passwords in a development system are the same in production systems. This is a statistic we have derived over the years. And these 7% users in the development systems, they are basically powerful users, so like administrators. So if an attacker finds a default password uh, in a development system, hacks the system, just runs the basic password cracking on the system, most likely they will be able to get to the production system as well. This is important because I'll come to that, but uh, I mean, you need to think about holistic security when you do SAP security. And the other parts, user authorizations is where everybody is freaky, but I think it is insignificant compared to other issues. Above code security is as well very important, but not only the SAP's code or the custom developed code, but the additional installed code. So the add on codes are very, very important as well. Um, the other part is typical subsystem security and DB and operating system security. So there are also a lot of things there, a lot of different attack vectors where somebody can just jump from one SAP system to another. I mean, when we look at the attacks, a very simple one, how can it be attacked? We uh, discovered a vulnerability in 2011, okay, um, and reported it, and somehow it got patched in 2013. Um, this basically allowed remote operating system command execution in sub-basis components. So these components are available in all types of SAP systems. So whether we have a CRM system, procurement system, financial system, or HR system, they are there. And it means an attacker can use this to execute operating system commands uh, using the username of the application server. So most probably they won't be able to format the hard drive uh, of the servers, but it is running as the application server user, which means it has full access to the database and business data. So when we reported this, SAP fixed this, and SAP is uh, this uh, like CVVS ratings for the vulnerabilities, and when the customers receive uh, sub-security notes, they look at these uh, vulnerabilities to see whether it's like a high-risk finding or medium-risk finding. And this interestingly got the score 6-0, like medium-risk. Well, I mean, if you have full operating system access, uh, full remote access to the database business data where you can add or change stuff, I mean, it shouldn't be 6 robot. but we said, okay. Then after SAP patched this, we also looked at how they actually patched this and found another vulnerability there, which is, again, allowing the same remote operating system code execution. But this time, they gave another rating for the same vulnerability, then suddenly it was 7.5. Um, so, I mean, if you leave your company to the risk scores that SAP does, it might be complicated. And independent security research is a little bit different than what the vendors usually claim. So you should just be uh, thinking that part. Um, there are the additional components as well, these add-ons that I've been talking about. And one of them, a very, very common one, is the open text Ixus. So it's used for document archiving and document management. It's a very, very common product. So in most of the enterprises, you find this. So until now, almost everywhere we have been there was installed. So they have a very good customer base, the company. <clears throat> but 
they had a function module, remotely enabled function module, which had an ABAP injection vulnerability. What does this mean? It means an attacker can basically upload and run ABAP code in the business system. So they can run anything that they desire. So this can be extracting salary information. I mean, here we have uh, some stuff. I don't know whether it, whether it is visible. Like extracting salary information, customer bank accounts, retrieving vendor bank accounts. We'll come to that. Changing bank account of the vendors, etc. So you can do a lot of nasty stuff there. And uh, how do we patch it, of course? I mean, how do we get notified about this? So these are uh, pretty difficult to track, these add-ons. But they, I mean, even after you securely harden the system, if these exist, the system still will be insecure. So just to repeat, an ABAP injection exploit uh, basically means you have like ring zero access uh, to the SAP system. You can do anything. It's really up to your imagination. And the good part is it is extremely stable because these systems are built to be stable. So uh, you can hardly cause any damage to system if I mean, you are not, of course, deleting or dropping tables. Um, let's do a basic demo. I mean, we are a little bit behind the schedule, but let's see. Since I cannot see the stuff from here. Yeah. Um, so we have two machines here. One is the attacker. And the other is the SAP system. Um, this vulnerability that I mentioned, uh, let me see. Um, by the way, this is our a penetration testing tool that we, we have developed. So uh, I'm just jumping to the remote shell part. So with this vulnerability in the subcommunication services, we are basically. Uh, able to send any commands to the system. So if uh, I would just say, I mean, execute this, this will be sent to the system and it will be executed. The problem with this vulnerability is that we don't get a response back. So we don't know whether it's actually executed properly or not. But that's simple to test. So I can just, like, in the system, run Wireshark and then try to uh, ping myself to see whether this actually works. So I'm just pinging it twice uh, so that the process doesn't hang and we don't accidentally uh, block the uh, SAP system. You see first ping comes and the second one also that. So we are able to execute commands in the remote system. Um, I mean, getting a ping response is good. We, we can do, of course, much more. Let me see. Uh, by the way, I hate Windows 8 and all derivatives. So basically, I'm just running the SQL GLE command to uh, update the password of an admin user. Okay, so I'm just running a command on the operating system of the application server, and then asking it to connect to the system, and then just update the password hash of the admin user. So. I can see what's going on. Let's see whether it worked. We can get all sorts of weird results. Didn't it work or am I typing it correct? Ah, okay, it worked. And I am actually logged into the system uh, as administrator. So what does this mean? This means uh, there are many ways to get full access to SAP systems. Um, 
I mean, this is the technical part. As I said, today I want to focus on the business part because getting a remote shell and these kind of things are cool uh, for us, maybe for security guys. But when you talk to the business, it's a different story and they want to see actually what can happen to the business. So we'll focus a little bit on the business. But let's start with what a business process is actually. So let's jump to the business part. I know it's a boring part for most of you, but when you see the power of it, it will be more fun, I'm sure, in the next couple of slides. Um, basically, a business process is collection of activities uh, to produce a specific service or product. And starts with a customer's need and ends with the customer's needs fulfillment. So this is a business uh, process. The most common of this one is the pin factory, if you remember Adam Smith. Uh, Adam Smith mentioned uh, about the division of labor there. So if there is a pin factory, instead of one person producing the pins, uh, you can divide the processes to different persons. And in his case, there were like 18 different parts of it. And Instead of doing it a single person, the complete process, you can make people specialize on the different parts of it. One cuts it, one does the other part, etc. And uh, in that case, this caused like uh, 240 times more output than the typical approach. And this is also the same with business processes. So people are specialized in their areas. So a very common business process is the uh, payment of invoices. And I'll just show you basically how we can attack to uh, this business process. Um, I mean, we have admin access, right? So it means we can reset, change anybody's account, delete our traces, I mean, do anything we can imagine. So a simple attack would be uh, basically going to the vendor payment history. If you are working at a large enterprise, you know, each month, the company must pay its bills, right? It can be electricity, uh, social security, other parts of it, telecommunications, and these are usually huge sums. So if an attacker hacks this system, they can just go and find out what the cust customer will pay next or what this company will pay next. This is important because then you don't need too much changes in the system. So uh, just by going to the vendor payment history uh, ABAP program and searching for uh, certain uh, vendor accounts. Here, uh, there is a part which says further selections. So when you click to it, and then here you say minus 10,000, I mean less than minus 10,000, uh, which means the company will be paying this money. So, so the, the sums that are more than 10,000 that this company will be paying end of this month or next month. So basically, the attacker can just run this, get the results, and look at the bank uh, account details afterwards. So here we see that there is uh, an open account with 749,000 euros. <coughs> That's roughly 1 million US dollars. Uh, the next step would be just for the attacker just going uh, to the FK2 transaction, uh, finding the account number of this company uh, that the enterprise will be paying money and uh, changing this bank account. So that's very simple and SAP provides a lot of tools to find and search these kind of things. So attacker goes, searches for the company, finds the company, brings the windows for changing the bank account, changes it to whatever it likes, and accepts it, logs in another user, uh, and then approves the change. Then this is in the system. So after this, the attacker doesn't need to do anything. So at the next pay run, this money will be immediately transferred. So uh, attacker has a couple of days to, I don't know, uh, take a flight to wherever favorite location is, which is not covered by Interpol or anything, I don't know. Uh, so this is very doable, and these are real attacks to these kind of systems. And at the end, 
it is not going and hacking uh, some user password. At the end, this is uh, really transferring big bulk of money. So this was the initial part. The second part of the presentation, we, as we will assume that the attacker has obtained these rights, or maybe it has already sufficient rights, or maybe the attacker is actually uh, working together with another person in the company to do collusion. And we'll talk about what this attacker can do afterwards. So before we come to that, let's talk about the birds part, which is the credit cards and birds. Um, there has been a recent inc incident with the target. I think you most probably know uh, it. Credit cards are also important because at the end it is money and it is directly uh, the objective of many attackers. In in the SEP, there are a lot of sub-modules which allow uh, payment card processing. The sales and distribution is the typical one where you like purchase an item, uh, but there are other ones as well in the financial accounting or in HR. So if you travel and the company gives you a credit card number, this is mostly done for uh, travel reimbursements, travel expenses. So the payment cards are processed all the time in SAP systems. Um, normally, the cardholder data shouldn't be stored on many cases, but unfortunately, it is stored, and it is stored in data tables, in change documents, uh, in transaction logs, and in many different parts of the system. There are some solutions who use tokenizing for masking these credit card numbers, but that's very, very few, and we'll come to them as well. So when we researched these tables, we found more than 50 tables which store cardholder data. It depends on which modules are used by the enterprise, uh, but uh, you find a lot of clear text uh, cardholder data in unexpected places at the end. So some common tables are like FPLTC, BCXC, etc. So you can find sometimes encrypted credit card data, sometimes clear text credit card data. And uh, actually accessing credit card data is pretty simple. So SAP has a basic transaction called SE16. You just type SE16, and then in the selection screen, you just type the name of the table. Uh, if you need to select and filter uh, certain types of credit card numbers, expiration dates, etc. You can also do that. And at the end, uh, you get uh, the access to these credit card numbers. That's pretty simple. Um, it is also possible to access these credit card numbers, the clear text card numbers, remotely, most commonly with the RFC protocol of SAP. So SAP also has additional functionality which allows this internal network kind of protocol, the RFC protocol, to be uh, available in the internet. So it has some proxy classes for converting to uh, this to swap RFC. And if you have a system which is accessible by, uh, from the internet, like a CRM system or SRM system, so like procurement systems, they, are, they need to be accessible from the internet, right? So people can uh, log in and send bidding information. So if you have such systems, somebody can exploit these systems to extract cardholder data as well. Most common function for ex uh, extracting data is RFC read table. And uh, it is old and dirty, but it usually does the trick. And actually, we can do it even easier. We can even use the subsucker for it. Um, if you don't know what subsucker is, subsucker is actually a bird that I ex accidentally found out. And it is a kind of woodpecker. So there is a bird with this name, which is, I don't know, interesting. Uh, and it is doing a parallel thing. So. Uh, so we built a tool based on this. Uh, we named it after this famous bird. And this allows accessing uh, subtables via RFC and HTTP protocols. So uh, 
if you also happen to do some cross-site scripting on SAP systems, usually they are like not very important, but you can even use these tickets uh, to then use it on the RFC protocol and extract the data from the system. So it is uh, quite handy. And here uh, we see we just like specify the card information and then you can uh, extract this information uh, pretty simply. So if you are interested, just drop me an email. Um, so decrypting the encrypted uh, card numbers is uh, something I thought that it would be very, very tricky, but actually it is pretty straightforward. Um, there are a couple of tables which contain this encrypted information. And you can use certain functionality in the system to actually decrypt the credit card numbers. So a very basic functionality which exists on ABAP systems is the RS repair source. So when you launch this program, you can create any ABAP report in the system without having a developer key or anything. So you just run it and then type and start writing your uh, decryption, decryption function. And since this system holds the keys for decryption and you are calling the native functions, uh, you are able to do it without requiring any password or anything. And this also works on production systems. This is the uh, interesting part. So uh, it is possible to do this with the uh, CCART develop or CSECA CNUM decryption function modules. And when we uh, were researching this, we also tried to find out whether there's like more information about this in the internet. By the way, if you are using the uh, pay metric, then this is the uh, XI pay E4 crypto function. So when we researched this in the internet, we noticed that uh, people are actually doing this. So uh, a better part is they're not just doing it and they're sharing their experiences. And this is something I found from the uh, SAP portal. I'm just gonna zoom it to you can read better. I mean, let me read it. Hi experts, I am using CCNUM decryption function module to decrypting card number inside the loop for to see full credit card number. It takes so much time. So developer is unhappy. Any function module for decrypting multiple card numbers at a time it is very urgent, so <laughs> I don't know what motivation this guy has. Why it is very urgent, okay. So is it like, oh, I have to like download the text file and then, I don't know, go to Bahamas or something. Um, but I mean, you never know what, you, what kind of dirty stuff you find in SAP forums. So I, I don't know, I mean, there are guys who are doing this. So for this, I mean, people are using external solutions, so uh, these external solutions are from, I and mean, there are like 10, 15 companies the most uh, for these external solutions. And these are commonly Paymetric, GMA Pay, Delego Secure, and these companies. So many of them use uh, now, some of them sort of use some tokenizing stuff, which is pretty cool compared to the elegance of implementation. Uh, I really like it. But at the end, when you say, okay, we assume there's a secure payment solution. I mean, we assume. Uh, and then there's an insecure SAP system. I mean, if you add them together, can it be a secure system? Um, well, you pretty much know the answer. Uh, for payment card processing, there is a standard concept in SAP. And uh, this concept is using SAP's registered service functionality. And this is, there has been a lot of talks about the registered functions. Uh, but just regarding the credit card system, I'll just summarize it basically for you. Um, here in the center, we have the SAP system. And SAP has something called gateway. This is like, like a listening daemon for dispatching certain requests. The payment card interface server, which connects to the bank, registers itself in this uh, SAP system. So then SAP can communicate with it. And this registration is controlled using an access control list, which is called the regime for file. So when subsystem sends a request, it goes to the payment card provider, then to the bank, and then bank says, okay, card is accepted or de declined. 
And uh, the thing is, since this system registers on the uh, server, external applications can also connect to the system using the subsystem without actually uh, having any access to SAP's backend, which is the user authorizations and uh, everything. So this is the standard concept. Um, in the standard concept, there are common security issues, as you can uh, imagine. The one thing is this rigging for configuration. Uh, the customers do not configure this, so it is open. This is very common. Uh, another issue is they might have configured it, but they have a kernel patch missing because it's a pain in the ass to install sub-kernel patches. Uh, and if you have that kernel patch missing, you, an attacker can actually bypass this uh, access control list. It is also fine. Uh, many of the customers, they also use SAP's uh, Reginfo uh, generator tool uh, for creating an access control list. And the interesting part of this tool is it creates access lists with access equals star. So, uh, you cannot register like a new payment card server, but you can access all of the functionality of these uh, systems. And I have communicated this with SAP many times, and they say the tool is actually an improvement, and uh, basically uh, in like some 100,000 pages of security documentation, somewhere there is something that people need to read and implement, something like that. So they don't acknowledge this as a security issue. Um, another thing is the, the names used for registration. They're also predictable for most of the uh, companies. So many of them allow customizing and changing this, but nobody does. So if they're predictable, then you can guess the service name and then you can start accessing the service and extract, uh, extracting data. So uh, system is registered. We have two scenarios, A and B. In A, uh, evil programs can send to the gateway service, which then sends it to the payment card server without any authentication to extract credit card information. So this is one, this is one common scenario. And the second one is that they can also register themselves. They're pretending to be a payment card interface. And then they can go to the internet shop purchase something, and then when it comes to Dash asking for approval, uh, they can just approve this request. So they can order goods from a company without actually paying for it. There are further security issues, especially if uh, modern tools such as process integration is used. I mean, many times we have seen that when you look at the logs, uh, Credit card information is constantly recorded in uh, log files of SAP. Or uh, people forget to switch off debug debugging. And I mean, if you just go and put a breakpoint on the ex external payment card interface, the moment the breakpoint hits, you can see from the variables all the credit card information. Um, encryption, very rarely used. I hardly seen anybody using proper encryption with credit cards. Uh, payment card interface systems. And the most common solution that in industry has found so far is redirecting users to a secure uh, credit card merchant page, uh, uh, page. Sorry, And you know, you have an insecure system and you are redirecting somebody to the secure Visa, MasterCard, whatever system, then people type their credit cards and then there's a redirect back. I mean, you know how problematic this is, because if you are able to modify the SAP system, then you can redirect them, them to another system as well. And getting a green uh, SSL certificate isn't something very difficult. Uh, when we look uh, at the people who do the audits of these systems, generally PCI DSS auditors do not have much information about the SAP systems. So people say, oh, OK. Uh, my system uses tokenizing and there's an external web interface, then they say, yeah, okay, then this is probably out of scope. But you should always think about the risks. So this results in man-in-the-middle attack uh, for CC 
settlement and CC authorization functions for uh, really approving transactions. It results in credit card data theft as well. Uh, so fake transaction authentication is also a side effect. I mean, there are a lot of things that can be done here. Most of them foreseeable. But there are also some unforeseeable ones. Uh, I mean, th since these things are cool, but at the same time, I mean, a little bit boring, uh, I thought of focusing on something a little bit different. So um, one topic is where I hear everywhere, uh, SAP should be more social media, uh, social network enabled. So everywhere people talk about this in conferences. I said, okay, let's do it, let's make SAP a little bit more uh, social networking enabled. So it is possible to temper the payment card interface function. That's the STCC card auth call RFC function. If you temper, if you plant a backdoor there, you can actually c capture credit card numbers real time. So I, uh, I wrote something called TweetBTTM. And this is uh, right now, as far as I know, the first SAP to uh, sub-credit card to Twitter interface. Uh, basically, it allows the SAP system to tweet after there is like a successful credit card transaction. So, I mean, it requires patching a certain critical SAP's code. So um, if you ask for support from SAP later, you might have some difficulties. Uh, but the good thing is if the tweeting function doesn't work, we have a fallback to the uh, DNS tunneling. So it is uh, very reliable. Um, some challenges with uh, this tool was Twitter changed its API last year. So previously you were just able to post to uh, a website and then get your tweets published. But now you need to have an SSL connection, everything. And in SAP, doing an SSL connection from above uh, is pretty difficult. The good side of this is the cardholder data is transferred in uh, encrypted form, so it is PCI DSS compliant. Uh, but it requires a lot of effort initially by initially uh, when planting the backdoor, uh, because you need to most probably, I mean, configure it from the S-Trust. You can do some work workarounds with some kernel calls and sub can PC. But at the end, for some unknown reasons, it takes roughly one to three seconds of like delay uh, for each tweet. Um, the DNS tunnel fallback uh, is pretty simple because there is an RFC function for name resolution in SAP. So you can use RFC host to IP uh, to put a long host name uh, for, uh, for doing a DNS query which includes cardholder data. Um, I wanted to release the source code uh, as public, but still we have discussions with the legal guys for a couple of months. And uh, yeah, I mean, follow me on Twitter to stay tuned, um, what can I say? So, and this results in this. So uh, if I haven't changed it, it's still uh, locked, but basically whenever something, somebody, uh, does a transaction in SAP, the SAP system just tweets, and you can see whether card is approved or de declined, and um, so, so we have basically SAP to Twitter interface. Okay, how do we stay secure? I mean, the fun part uh, was that, so the ugly part is how do we stay secure? Um, it is actually not that difficult as people think, even in these complex landscapes. And the first thing is addressing the complete pictures. This is very, very important to, ac to approach SAP systems holistically because if you focus on individual systems, you lose the global picture. So uh, you shouldn't focus on just user authorizations and be obsessive about it. You should focus on all these areas of security, including the authentication, passwords part, I and mean, that's one of the most important ones and all the other parts, including above code security. Second, you should have a holistic process to stay secure. With these SAP uh, audits, the focus is generally in the prevention part. 
So in security, we say you should always have prevention, detection, and response. And people focus on prevention, so they do a vulnerability assessment on a couple of systems and try to fix these issues. But the focus should be also on detection and real-time response as well. Because there's, there's, this, is a, this is also a political impact. If you, are able, if you are not able to detect incidents, then after some time, the, uh, you will lose the support from the management. So you should always have eyes on the system. If something happens, you should be able to detect it. And you should be a little bit uh, confident uh, that nothing is happening. But without even having the security audit logs switched on, uh, it is hard to accomplish this. So. Um, SAP is a very complex architecture. You cannot just hire consultants and pay them endless money uh, to get the stuff secured. You should automate it, full stop. And this means automated scans, automated PCI DSS compliance checks, automated ABAP code corrections. Uh, real-time monitoring, and all the other parts of the SAP security. So you should treat all of your SAP systems together as a single application. And uh, this single application should be capable on its own to uh, have security functionality. So uh, some final slides about us. Uh, I'm from a company called ESNC. Uh, from Germany, and we basically uh, assess and fix security issues in SAP systems. So one part of the tool you have seen that was the penetration testing module. Uh, we basically uh, built tools for uh, securing these systems and doing security monitoring. We are based in Munich, and our customers are generally uh, governmental institutions, utilities, banking, oil, and um, other uh, branches. So, I mean, it's a little bit late, maybe, but my name is Ertung Arsal. Uh, I have a long history on SAP systems. I like and hate them at the same time. Uh, and until now, I have audited uh, more than a couple of hundreds of SAP systems. So, um, I believe, I mean, these systems are pretty cool at the end because they are gigantic systems. And uh, until now, I mean, just last year we had more than 75 sub-security patches published by SAP. So this is more than 100 vulnerabilities in very different areas, including cryptography as well. And uh, I'm hoping that these numbers will go down. So in a couple of years, we'll have much less findings in SAP systems. And I'm the uh, founder of the ESNC. So I would say the many of SAP security would be the audit and assessment part, but you shouldn't spend more than 10% of your energy on it. Uh, if, this, if these are payment cards related systems, you should, of course, focus on PCI DSS 3.0 com compliance now, because uh, I think the deadline is end of 2014 or 15, I'm not very sure now. Uh, but it is soon, so you need to take care of it. Um, so, uh, CM integration is something very popular right now because at the end you need to monitor the systems, right? So when you are planning for such uh, investments or infrastructures, you should always uh, think about some proper reporting, alerting interfaces, and this is something uh, uh, you should keep in mind. So I think it's time to go to lunch. So I'd like to say thank you to uh, especially to Eric Bushman from Paymetric uh, for the good inputs and my team uh, for helping me with uh, this uh, research. And if you have any questions or answer answers, you can shoot them now. Um, we are at uh, A10 in the exhibitions hall, so you can also come over to see some other SAP hacks. So, any questions? Good, then uh, see you soon and have a great lunch.